Good morning. This is Deacon Don LaRose from Holy Family Church. Happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas. You know, here we are in the beginning of Advent. And as the Christmas season begins to unfold and surround us with all the holiday decorations, music, lights, clothing, movies, gifts, baking, all of it, all of it I really love. But you know, there's so much of it that it can sometimes make Christmas begin to feel like a big made-for television event of some sort, a myth designed to sell plastic holiday decorations and to get us to watch Christmas movies. And so I think it's good for us every once in a while to connect all of it to what is real and what's true and what the facts are underneath it all that are the basis of our belief that Jesus was really born as described in the Bible. It is, after all, the foundation of our faith that Jesus was and is the Son of God, and that he came into the world to teach us what is important in God's eyes and to prove to us who he was so that we would believe in him. And, of course, to sacrifice himself for our sins in order to reconcile us with God. That's why he needed to be born of a human woman. You know, knowledge about the truth of the birth of Jesus doesn't take away from the spirit of the holiday. It enhances it. So what do we know to be true? How do we know it's true? Luke writes in his gospel a very detailed description of Jesus' birth that includes people, places, and time frames that are dated against the kingship of Herod in Judea, which is you know, how dating of events in that time frame were done, dating things against kings and Caesar's reign. As Luke writes... The angel Gabriel was sent from God to the town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel said to Mary, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Luke also dated these events against a decree for a census that went out from Caesar Augustus for all territories of Rome and added that this was the first enrollment when Canarius was the governor of Syria. These de details would have been very easy to check in Luke's time. Of Jesus' birth, Luke writes that, And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Luke also tells of the shepherds in the region being visited by an angel of the Lord, and they were struck with fear. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you the good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David a Savior has been born for you, who is Messiah and Lord. Luke writes, that when the angels went away from them, the shepherds decided to go to Bethlehem to see the child. And when they arrived, they made known to Mary and Joseph what had happened to them. And Luke writes that Mary kept all these things reflecting them on them in her heart, which probably means that Luke got this information directly from Mary or through someone else close to her. The story of Jesus' birth is also told by Matthew in his gospel that includes the visit by the wise men. Matthew's account also tells of the horrible massacre of infants in Bethlehem at Herod's order, which again, it would be easy to verify in Matthew and Luke's time. So the mindset of what do we know and how do we know it? You know, where does information come from and is it credible? Well, what do we know about Luke and is he credible? Luke was a companion and medical advisor to Paul. Paul, as you probably know, is a rabid persecutor of Christians in the years immediately following Jesus' death until Paul experienced a vision of the risen Jesus, after which Paul became the most prolific evangelist for Christianity, really, ever. That dramatic conversion of Paul is considered by historians and Bible scholars as one of the known, sure facts of Bible history, because Paul was very well known both before and after his conversion. Luke wrote both the Gospel according to Luke, of course, and the Acts of the Apostles, which was a follow-up to his Gospel. 
and some people look at it as the fifth gospel, really. It's where he picks up and left off, where he left off at the end of his gospel, Jesus ascending to heaven. In uh, Acts of the Apostles, he, Luke provides a narrative of the spread of Christianity throughout the Roman Empire in those years after Jesus' death. And in Acts, he tells us why he is writing and for whom. Luke dedicates both his gospel and his book on the Acts of the Apostles to a person by the name of Theophilus. Luke says this, he said, It seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write carefully in order for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the facts concerning the things of which you have been informed. Now it's not known who Theophilus was, but he seems to be someone who hired Luke to write a complete report on Jesus. Now Luke makes every effort to be accurate in his reporting and is considered to have been a top-notch historian. John Robinson is an author who wrote a book by the name of Redating the New Testament. And he says this about Luke. He says that Luke presents himself, you know, not as a theologian, but primarily as a historian. Now, Sir William Ramsey, a Scottish archaeologist and professor at the University of Edinburgh, con concluded after 30 years of study that Luke is a historian of the first rank. Not merely are a statements of fact trustworthy, this author should be placed along with the greatest of historians. He also said Luke's history is unsurpassed in respect to trustworthiness. John McRae, another professor of New Testament and archaeology at Wheaton College, said this of Luke. He said that Luke writes as an educated man. And archaeological discoveries are showing over and over again that Luke is accurate in what he has to say. One of those examples, the things that makes these uh, archaeologists and historians you know, be, live in amazement at, at uh, Luke's writing, is that Luke recorded um, about a shipwreck that Paul was in. And he talked about 275 people around the ship with, with Paul. So it's not a little sailboat, it's a big boat, big ship. And he even included the direction that the wind was blowing in his, in his information. So archaeologists have come to recognize this man recorded facts. So back to the question of what do we know and how do we know it? And where does the information come from? And is it credible? The amazing story about the birth of Jesus comes from both the apostle and eyewitness Matthew, but also from Luke, a companion of Paul's, who historians and archaeologists say was accurate when he wrote and unsurpassed in respect to trustworthiness. These stories of witness are told by men who spent the rest of their lives traveling the then-known world to tell people about Jesus, with many of them going to their deaths willingly rather than recanting their stories or stopping the preaching about them. So, as you consider this, I hope that it adds joy to your celebration of the birth of Jesus at this Christmas time, knowing that truth, that Jesus really was born to the Virgin Mary in a stable in Bethlehem and visited by shepherds who told of being visited by an angel announcing his birth. This is not myth. It's not fiction. It is historical fact. So have yourself a merry little Christmas and a blessed day.